Hello everyone, let's talk about continuity of a function. When we say that the function is continuous, it means that we can draw its graph without lifting the pen on the paper. Or in other words, when we graph it, it does not have any holes, any gaps, or any breaks. Now, for example, this first function, the one that you see on the left, this function is defined or described as continuous because we can extend the graph no, without lifting the pen on the paper. There are no holes or no gaps. On the other hand, the function that is graphed on the right, we can see here a hole and a replacement uh, point below it. So this is a discontinuous function because we have this gap. There are two types of discontinuity and the first is essential discontinuity. Uh, given a function f of x, it has an essential discontinuity at x equals c if its limit as x approaches c does not exist. For example, we have this function. Uh, this is defined by g of x and then equal to x plus 5 if x is less than 1. That's why you can see here the linear part of the graph. And the quantity of x minus 1 squared plus 2 if x is greater than or equal to 1, which is the parabolic part of the graph. Recall that this is a piecewise function and it exhibits essential discontinuity. According to the definition, the limit does not exist. So let's take a look at its limit. Let's take into consideration the value that x approaches, which is 1. From the left, it approaches the value of 6. And from the right, it approaches the value of 2. Since they are not the same, by definition, its overall limit does not exist. This is what the first type of this discontinuity tells us. The limit as x approaches c does not exist. The second type of discontinuity is removable discontinuity. We still have a function f of x and there is a value x equals c. It is discontinuous if it exists, not the limit of f of x as x approaches c exists. However, it's either f of c does not exist or its value is not equal to the limit. For example, we have this function h of x which is equal to this type of graph. So as you can see here, we have the line and then at exactly x equals 4, we have an open circle and it is removed. It's, it's as if this point is removed and replaced here or replaced by this point. The limit exists because we have the limit of uh, h of x as x approaches 4 from the left that is 4 from the left this is negative 2 same goes with the limit of h of x as x approaches 4 from the right that is also negative 2 see the overall limit exists just like what is stated in this slide or in this definition However, the value of f of 4 is equal to positive 4. Recall that when we are getting the exact value or the actual value and we have to choose between open and closed circle, we will choose the closed circuit. So they are not equal even if the limit exists. So therefore, this graph shows removable discontinuity. On the next slide, we have a graph, this piecewise function that has different uh, sections. And 
for each point, let's identify if the graph is continuous or discontinuous. If this is discontinuous, we determine further what kind of discontinuity it exhibits. First is x equals negative 4. This is that part. For x equals negative 4, we can see that the left-hand limit is obviously not equal to the right-hand limit. There is a gap, there is a break. So this is discontinuous and essential. On the other hand, when we have x equals negative 3, we can see that on this part, there's a smooth graph for the function, so we can say that this is continuous. Next, for x equals negative 2, still there is no gap or there is no break between them, so we have a continuous part here. For x equals negative 1, again, this is continuous. Same goes for x equals 0 because we have a continuous graph there. For x equals 1, still it is continuous. For x equals 2, we can see here a gap. So we can be alarmed that this is a discontinuity. And it is essential because the limit does not exist. The left-hand part and the right-hand part, their limits are not equal. For x equals 3, we draw a line. Now, it seems that the curve is smooth there. There is no gap, so that we can say it's continuous. For x equals 4, okay, the limit exists because its left hand and right hand limit agree on the value which is positive 2. However, there is an open circle and there is no closed circle to replace it. So this is discontinuous removable. So that is how we determine the continuity of a function using its graph. We also have this alternative. If you don't have the graph of the function, we will call this the continuity test. In order for the function to be continuous at x equals c, it should have the following or it should meet the following conditions. First, the actual value of c exists. The limit of f of x as x approaches c exists. And the answer in the two previous bullets should be equal. If at least one of them is not met, then automatically the function is discontinuous. Let's have the first example. Let's determine whether this function is continuous at x equals 1. The first condition is to determine f of 1. We substitute the value itself. So we have 1 cubed plus 1 squared minus 2. 1 cubed is 1 plus 1 minus 2. This will be simplified to 0. So that is the actual value of f of x at x equals 1. Next condition, we need to identify the limit ng f of x as x approaches 1. Since this is a polynomial function, we can just use the substitution method. Recall that we have a theorem about that. This will still lead to 0. Since they are equal, the third bullet is also met. Therefore, f of x is continuous at x equals 1. For the second example, we have a rational function x squared minus x minus 2 all over x minus 2. And we have to determine the continuity of it at x equals 0 and x equals 2. Let's have first f of 0. For f of 0, we have uh, 0 squared minus 0 minus 2 
all over 0 minus 2. So the numerator will just result to negative 2 as well as the denominator. So the value of the function at x equals 0 is positive 1. Next, we have the limit of the function as x approaches 0. What we can do here is we can factor the numerator as x minus 2 and x plus 1. Recall that the numerator is factorable. And afterwards, we can eliminate x minus 2, leaving us with just the limit of x plus 1 as x approaches 0. Next, we have to apply the limit theorem, sum and difference rule, wherein the first term will be applied with the limit of x, which is 0, and the limit of a constant, which is 1. Adding them, the answer is also 1. Since the first and the second bullet are equal, the third bullet is already met. Therefore, f of x is continuous at x equals 0. Now, for this second value of x, which is 2, let's substitute it immediately. Notice that when we substitute it, we do not involve any factoring, just plain substitution. We have here 2 squared, 4 minus 2 minus 2, all over 2 minus 2. The numerator will be 0 as well as the denominator. So therefore, f of 2 does not exist. Because it arrived with a value which is indeterminate. And according to the continuity test, if one of the condition is not met, we stop the solution. We already conclude that f of x is discontinuous at that point. Again, if either f of c or the limit of that function as x approaches c does not exist, you stop the solution automatic. The function is discontinuous at that part. When we have this third example, we are dealing with a rational equation. Still, the process is the same. For this part, I will be pausing for a while. After 10 seconds, I will resume the discussion. So for the first item, we have to substitute it. So we have the square root of 4 minus 1, or simply the square root of 3. Since it is a real value, we continue to the second bullet, the limit of f of x, as x approaches 4. We can already use the power rule, wherein we are getting the limit of the radicand no, inside the square root sign. So we can say that this is equal to the square root of the limit of x minus 1 as x approaches 4. So in other words, this is still equal to the square root of 4 minus 1 or 4 minus 1, that's 3. Since they are equal, then f of x is continuous at x equals 4. You have to always remember the three conditions in the continuity test. First, f of c is existing. The limit of f of x at x approaches c should also be existing and the two answers are equal. Otherwise, if one does not exist or they are not equal, then the given is discontinuous at that point. 